by guests or representatives of the Israel United Israel United in Christ. Yes, sir. Indeed, indeed. And these gentlemen are here to speak to us about any number of topics, but of course I will let they will be leading the conversation. I will chime in with questions that I may have of natural curiosity, but just uh, a bit of information beforehand. And they are a bit different than your traditional Christian church, and their goal is to change the hearts and minds of our communities by bringing them the truth of their identity and nationality in the Bible, which is the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And they are founded on scriptural values and biblical laws which govern us as an organized nation, as we often call ourselves. And that says a lot and is a mouthful. And of course, they are here in studio with us, and I want to say a special good evening to them. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Thank good you, evening. gentlemen. Good evening. And so uh, let, let's get right into it. Um, I'm a neophyte, but I'm still very much interested, and I've done my own personal research. And one is required to do their research because ignorance is no excuse in this time, in this season, this period of information, mass information. Yes, However, sir. However, the question is, you must decide whose bias you seek. Mm -hmm. And at 7.30, as we commence this wonderful dialogue and discourse, we are here to now learn. I'm here to learn. So please do share with us just some of the basic precepts and, 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 and laws or, or, or the... the the rules that govern the yes, sir. United or is Israel united in Christ. Absolutely. That was a uh, first I might I'm gonna say all oh, praises to the most high God for allowing us to, to be here today to spread this uh beautiful news, this good the good news which is the gospel. Um and that was a nice in introduction by the way. All right, you could probably be one of our spokesperson here in Bahamas. That was beautiful. Um, all praises to the Most High. Uh, we're going to open up with Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 9. All right, uh, we're Israel united in Christ. Uh, we were established in 2003. And our main objective is to raise up the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, let's open up with Ephesians 1 verse 9. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had proposed in himself. Read that again one more time. Wherein he hath abounded to... Verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Having made known unto us the mystery. I need you brothers and sisters at home. Take out your notepad. Get your pen. Turn off the TV. Okay, listen to what we're saying. God is saying, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Okay, what is God's will? He sent his son to die for the nation of Israel, to bring the nation of Israel back to repentance, that we all might inherit the kingdom of God. What is God's will? He wants us to keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. That is the mystery. Another mystery. That you so-called blacks over here in Bahamas, you so-called Haitians. There's Haitian people in Bahamas. I'm shocked. Wherever I go, I, there's Haitian people. Levi is scattered everywhere, all right? Thus saith the prophecy of the Bible. But you so-called blacks in Bahamas, what you're going to learn is that you are not blacks. You're not Negroes. You're not Bahamian. You're not West Indian. You are not Caribbean. God calls you the Israelites. That is the great mystery of the Bible. All right? Your nationality has been stripped and taken from you by the so-called white man. Yes, I said it. A lot of you don't like to say that word. The so-called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of. He's the one that took away your nationality, robbed you of a self-culture um, self and self-knowledge of who you are. Okay, and you must learn who you are before Christ comes back. Let's open up with Jeremiah 17 verse 4. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage mm -hmm. that I gave thee. So God gave us a heritage, brothers and sisters of Bahamas. What is your heritage? Your heritage is the Bible. Your heritage is not Baptist, Anglican, Catholic, Christianity as it's taught today. Your heritage is not Queen Elizabeth. Your heritage is not any Bahamian traditions that you might have. 
Your heritage is found in the Bible. Your heritage is found in the Bible. But God said that we shall discontinue from the heritage that he gave us. Read on. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. To serve thine who? Thine enemies. Your enemies, not your friends. Not your friends. The so-called white man that comes here on the island of Bahamas and he tours around your country. He comes here, he sets up shops, takes all the resources. Okay? Even the Asian man. Now it's the Chinese takeover. Everywhere I go, I see an Asian man. Every store in Bahamas owned by Asian people. What is going on? What you're going to find out is there are curses on our nation because we disobeyed God's laws. We are the biblical Israelites. Read that again. And thou... Even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. You hear that? God said he's going to cause us to serve our enemies in a land that we knew not. Did your forefathers know the island of Bahamas? No. And I'm not talking about your father or your mother or even your grandmother. I'm talking about your great, 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 great grandparents that was bought here on cargo slave ships. Right there, there's a museum right there, downtown Bahamas, Pompeii Museum. In the back of Pompeii Museum, what did you have? The auctioning, the auctioning blocks, the great slave ports. The history is here. The history is here. And all you have to do is open your eyes and match the history with the history in the Bible. But many of you didn't know that the Bible is a history book. Why? Because of the evils and the misinterpretations of the so-called white man. Okay? And these false Christian pastors that you have here on this island who are paid agents of the so-called white man. And their main objective is to keep you asleep. Okay? Let's go in the Bible and get some color. Let's go to Job. No, actually Genesis. Genesis 2 verse 7. Let's go to the first man. Because we all have Bibles at home. All you brothers and sisters have Bibles at home. Open it up. Take it off the coffee table. Dust it off. Open it up and go to the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Let's read it. Come on. This is the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. You hear what the Bible says? God formed man of the dust of the ground. The dust of the ground. What colors the dust of the ground? Brown. The, di the deeper you dig, the browner it gets. God formed man, the first man, Adam, from the dust of the ground. The dust of the ground. Go to Jeremiah 14 and 2. Let's go to the Jews. Because the Bible is the book of the Jews. What you going to find out, brothers and sisters, you're the Jew. You are the Jew. All this time in church, they've been teaching you that you are the Gentiles. You are not the Gentiles. But you're in a Gentile state of mind. You are in a Gentile state of mind. All right. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Judah mourneth. The tribe of Judah is in mourning. Judah mourneth. Who's Judah? The American blacks. Come on. And the gates thereof languish. And the gates are the leaders. The leaders are in languish. Meaning the leaders are piss poor and sad. Meaning they're worth nothing. Okay? They are not helping our people. They are not alleviating the problems of our people. But they are contributing to the problems. Why? Because they are weak leaders. Come on. They are black. They are what? They are black. So the Jews are black. Unto the ground. Unto the what? Unto the ground. Go back to Genesis, please. Why is, it, why is Jeremiah saying the Jews are black unto the ground? Let's read Genesis 2 verse 7. Precept upon precept. Something that they don't do in these pork chop eating churches over here in Bahamas. They don't go precept upon precept. Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So that's why in Jeremiah he says they're black unto the ground. Because the Jews are black. The first man Adam was black. All nations on the earth were black before the so-called white man was born. And we'll read that a little later. But let's get the color first. Black people. Get me Job 30 verse 30. Let's go to the book of Job chapter 30 verse 30. Is Job's color written in the Bible? You better believe it is. You brothers and sisters at home, take your pen. Write these notes down. Bring it to your pastor this come Sunday. And say, Pastor Johnson, why haven't you taught us this? Why haven't you taught us that we are the Israelites and we must keep God's commandments? 
Why are you teaching Christmas? Why are you teaching Easter? You're going to find out that your pastor, your pastors are of the devil that the Bible speaks of. Give me Job 30 and 30. This is the book of Job, chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. My skin, my skin, my skin. Your skin is what separates your muscle, um, what covers your muscle. Okay, you have your bone, you have the blood vessels, you have your muscles, ligaments, and tendons, then you have your skin. Your skin has a complexion. Okay, your skin has a complexion. Job says what? My skin is black upon me. Job said his skin is black upon me. Go to King Solomon, Song of Songs, which is Solomon. Please, start at verse 1 and jump to verse 5. We are, about to, we are going to read about the greatest king that ever walked this planet Earth. One of the wisest kings on this earth. Our forefather, King Solomon. That's right, I said it. Our forefather, King Solomon. Not the white man that calls himself a Jew. He is not the real Jew, according to the Bible. Come on. Come on, Songs of Songs, which is Solomon. This is the book of the Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse... Verse 1. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. The Song of Songs... Which is Solomon. So who wrote the Song of Songs? Solomon did. Because I know in these Christian churches, they're telling you a black woman wrote it to him. His lover wrote it to him. No, Solomon wrote this song. Come on. Let him kiss me. Verse 5. Verse 5. I am black. I am what? I am black. I am black. I am black. How many times we got to keep reading that? I am black. So color matters. If it's written in the Bible, it matters. So stop saying the, stu the stupid phrase that you learned from your pastor. But color don't matter, brethren. It's what's in your heart. So, Solomon says, I'm black but comely. You know what comely means? Handsome. Handsome. King Solomon is saying he was black and handsome. Okay? Now let's go to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let's go to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I know it right now. You're twitching in your seat. Some of you probably logged off already. Some, some of you don't want to hear this. Some of you are running headfirst into the wall. Some of you are cursing us out right now. But you have a remnant of y'all. Guess what? This is good news for you. You have a remnant of people in Bahamas. They're going to wake up to this truth of who they are according to the Bible. Come on. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 14. Mm -hmm. His head. His what? His head. Uh-huh. And his hairs were white like wool. So the hair on Christ's head and the hair on his face, because Christ had a beard, was white like wool. Okay? Not only was it white in color, the texture was woolly. The texture was woolly. Who has woolly hair today? Process of elimination, brothers and sisters. Who has woolly hair today? Just look at the picture of Jesus that you have in your house now. It has long blonde hair. Stringy, long, blonde hair, right? Is that woolly hair? No. Woolly hair is nappy hair. Woolly hair is kinky hair. Woolly hair is that hair that you black sisters love to perm and blonde. Why? Because of self-hate. Because of self-hate and everything that we learned under the so-called white man. Okay? Now we color our hair blonde and we perm our hair because we want to look just like the white woman. Okay? But Christ... The greatest man to ever walk this planet Earth, his hair was woolly. Read. As white as snow. So it was all white. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why was Christ's eyes as a flame of fire? That's making reference to the whites of his eyes was as a flame of fire. Let's read the prophecy. Precept, Genesis 49 and verse 12. Notice what we're doing. Everything that I'm saying, brothers and sisters, we are proving according to the Bible. These are not our own words. We are, going, we are going precept upon precept. Come on. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. Whose eyes shall be red with wine? When you read the book of Genesis 49, verse 12, uh, Moses was making reference to the coming Messiah, Jesus the Christ. He says, his eyes shall be red with wine. What was Christ's first miracles, brothers, sisters at home? Christ's first miracle, he turned water into wine. All right? Go back to Revelation. And Christ drank some of that wine. Okay? When you drink 
a certain amount of alcohol, what happens to your um, the, the capillaries in your eyes? They dilate and they give off a red complexion. That's why his red, his eyes was red with wine. That's why his eyes were as a flame of fire. Okay? That's the scientific reason behind it for you Scientologists out there. Come on. And his feet like unto fine brass, mm -hmm. as if they burn in a furnace. What color is brass? Brass is brown. Brass is brown. Brass is brown. It says as if they burned it in a furnace. You burn anything in a furnace, brothers and sisters, what color does it become? Take that white rice at home that you just imported from China. Throw it in the furnace. Leave it there. Burn it. Take it out. What color? Black. So what color was Christ? He was a black man. He was from the tribe of Judah. A dark-skinned black man from the tribe of Judah. So why do you hate yourselves? Running around, bleaching your hair, blonde. Looking silly as, as hell. Some of you are blacker than night with blonde hair. Looking like a bumblebee. Looking crazy. Okay? Leviticus chapter 13 verse 30. Let's find out what God says about blonde hair. Okay? Leviticus chapter 13 verse 30. Let's go. Leviticus 13 verse 30. Then the priest shall see the plague. The priest shall see the plague. A plague is a curse. A plague is a curse. Come on. And behold... If it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair. A what? A yellow thin hair. What's the word we're looking for that we want to focus on? Yellow, yellow, yellow thin hair, yellow thin hair. Come on. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. The priest shall pronounce you unclean. Yellow hair is unclean in the sight of God. Okay? God loves a nappy, woolly, kinky hair. An afro, a woolly hair, a nappy hair. The hair you hate, God loves that. Why? Because God has hair like that. Okay? And we're going to prove it in a minute. The Bible says that blonde hair is leprosy. Come on, read. It is a dry skull. Uh-huh. Even a leprosy. A what? A leprosy. Uh-huh. Upon the head or beard. You hear that? Upon the hair or beard, God says blonde hair is a leprosy, black woman. So take that wig off your head, that blonde hair, okay? And rock your natural, beautiful hair. And you brothers and sisters, stop um, putting that propaganda in the minds of these sisters. Cherish their natural hair, okay? The only reason the black woman over here in Bahamas is running around like she got a mop on her head is because of you brothers. Because you trying to you 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 uh you you uh push that propaganda in your TVs, in your social media, in your books. You push that thing, trying to get her to look like Nicki Minaj and all these crazy other people in the black community. Okay, get me the book of Daniel. Get me Dan Daniel chapter seven. Okay, we're still focused on color. Okay, and the reason I'm trying to do that is because you have been thoroughly indoctrinated to believe. That the white man is the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. You don't know how it is. You don't know how, how, how much glory you should have in this Bible, man. This Bible is speaking about you. Come on. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So our forefather Daniel seen a vision. He said he beheld till the thrones were cast down. What thrones is it making reference to? All the kingdoms of the earth were cast down. Come on. And the Ancient of Days did sit. And the who sat? And the Ancient of Days did sit. And the Ancient of Days did sit. In order for God to sit, he has to have a behind. He has to have a body. Come on. Whose garment? Whose was, what? Whose garment? In order to have a garment, you got to have a body to put it on. Come on. Was white as snow. Was white as snow. Come on. And the hair of his head. And the hair on God's head. Like the pure wool. Wow. Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. You got a question, brother? Yeah, I got a question. So, I, 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 hear, you, I hear you taking your, your stance, uh, your, your, your biblical stance, and of course that's, that's, that's what you're supposed to stand on for those who are believers. Mm -hmm. But I would ask the question, uh, with Israel and us being black, mm -hmm. black men, if, 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 because it's a neophyte, a neophytic kind of question, but here it is for you. We are talking about Israel, but where and how do we make the connection to the continent of Africa? Where, oh. where, 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 because some years ago, National Geographic did this test mm -hmm. on people who, some of the 
some of the, the Jewish priests or the Jewish the, the Jewish elders, mm -hmm. and they did the swap like how they do uh, where they find your identity and the gene pool or whatever. DNA. They swap the DNA. They swap the DNA. They swap the inside of the mouths of the Jews, and they went down to Ethiopia, and also went down to South Africa, and they found that those priestly lines are connected also to the Habisha, I don't know if you guys know about who the Habisha is, the, the, uh, the ethnic Eritrea and Ethiopia. There's a connection between those people in, in Ethiopia, Israel, and South Africa. And the diaspora. The diaspora, yeah, the diaspora. But I wanted to, and the question is, how do these quote unquote Caucasoid looking people, Caucasians mm -hmm. of some sort, how is it that they have the same? Is it that they came from us? Is there a connection between the two? Have we traveled so far up, moving towards Israel, out of Africa, out of Africa? Have I called my son? Because, you know, with Jesus, quote, unquote, he, he, after the first country he visited after, or went to, place he went to after he was born, because, you know, Herod was killing the Holy Innocence, they went to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible it says, out of Egypt I have called my son. So, is there a connection as well? Because we understand that the people in Egypt they, they are yeah, our cousins, they're not black per se, but they are black. But you call them like lighter skin black, as you, as you can probably call them lighter skin black, mulattoes, mm. or lighter skin. Um, where is the connection there? Is, is, is Africa the, to be moved away from or forsaken? Are we really going to Israel? Can we? <coughs> the question is, geographically speaking. Geographically speaking. I got you. It holds all of us. Yes, so sir. We, it's our home. Uh huh. Right? So. How are we to then move away from Africa, per se, geographically, mm -hmm. not, 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 not uh, philosophically and not emotionally mm -hmm. and not psychologically, not metaphysically, but how are we to move away from Africa to say we're going to try to get into Israel? I okay, know. I got you. Okay. I got you. I'm going to answer your question. All right, first, I'm going to answer the first part because you mentioned genealogy. Give me right. First Timothy 1, verse 4. You mentioned genealogy. In order... In order to say that the white man is the Jew, because you said they tested uh, um, DNA from the Ethiopians right. and then themselves, right? And then down in South Africa. There's the Jedi, mind, the Jedi mind trick, is that they're comparing the Ethiopian DNA to theirs. Okay. What they should be comparing is the DNA of those who call themselves Jews to the bones of King David and King Solomon. But they're comparing the Ethiopians to the Ashkenazi Jews, Ashkenazi Jewish people in Israel. Those are not the Jews. So that's the Jedi mind trick right there. They need the actual bones of the Israelites, the actual DNA of the people that were in the land prior to the white people coming in. Now, read that, and then I'm going to answer your question about Africa. Come on. This is the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 4. Mm hmm Neither give heed to fables mm -hmm. and endless genealogies. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. God said in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that these signs and these wonders shall be, uh, these curses shall be upon you and your seed forever. We're supposed to use the curses in the Bible to identify ourselves, who we are in the latter days, not genealogy. Because there's been many debunks and videos out and hoax videos on that genealogy stuff. Genealogy DNA test is all malarkey, is all a scam. Now, you mentioned, um, get me Galatians 4.26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. The mother of us all is Jerusalem. Why? Because the Garden of Eve was in the Garden of Eden was in Northeast Africa, was in Jerusalem. That was the capital. That was the headquarters. That's where creation started. Israel is in Africa. You wanted to know the connection there? Israel is in Africa. Parts of Israel shares the same tectonic plate as Africa. Now it's separated, like for example, back then, right? You had to go from when Moses went into Israel. How did he get there? Did Moses take the boat? When Jesus ran up out of Jerusalem, how did he get into Egypt? They walked into Egypt. They walked into Egypt. When Jacob went into Egypt, how did they get there? They walked on foot, on foot. 
Okay. Jacob and the question, 70 question, souls. Question for you. Mm -hmm. You said Israel is in Africa. Yes, Northeast Africa. Northeast Africa. So that would take us somewhere, Tripoli, uh, Libya, that area? Past that. Okay. Oh. The Horn of Africa, around about uh, Ethiopia area. Ethiopia is further south. Okay, so Northeast Africa. Yes, sir. So it's in the continent of in Africa. In the continent of Africa. So, okay. All right. But so if now... There be, if there was to be... Quick, hold up. If the, there was to be a migration of sorts, people yeah. had to go to the, the, the person united Israel united Israel united in Christ yeah and its followers and those who believe in in your in your doctrine that tenet that you preach or mm -hmm. you are preaching yeah your 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 pilgrimage would be to northeast Africa uh, no. Not Israel as no 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 today. uh 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 we are not trying to get anybody get me Luke 21 Sorry, verse 21. We, no, we're not trying to get anybody to go to Israel. If you want to go to Israel on a vacation, that's fine. Uh -huh. But we have um, Israel, Israel United in Christ. We have sanctuaries and congregations through all abroad. America, Caribbean, Africa, Europe. We're everywhere. Okay. We've been to Israel, but we're not telling anybody to go back there. Why? Because it's in the hand of white supremacists. Okay, we were chased up out of that out of that land. We were exiled out of out of that land for our wickedness, and we're going to read it. But but um, I don't want to forget my last statement. Uh, Israel is in Africa, share the same tectonic place as Africa. The only thing that separates Israel from Egypt today, brothers and sisters, is what's known as the Suez Canal. It was a man-made canal, yes, you guessed it, by the so-called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of. But back then. J um, Jacob walked into Egypt. Christ and Mary, they walked into Egypt. Okay, now you gotta, you gotta, you can drive, but you gotta pass over a damn canal. Okay, so that is the destruction. The white man has taken everything and flipped it upside down. But the prophets have returned back to turn it right side up. Now let me show you something. Let me show you something real quick. Leviticus, uh, Luke twenty-one. Let me show you the history. How did we end up in Africa? And then we fled down further into Africa, where we migrated on the west coast of Africa, and even into Ethiopia, and further down. Okay, read. Luke 21, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And when ye shall see Jerusalem, come past with armies. So, brother, who's talking right now? Who's talking, brothers and sisters? Christ. Christ is warning us about the pending destruction on Jerusalem. Come on. Then no. That the desolation thereof is nigh. Know that the destruction is near. What destruction? Titus and Vespasian. 70 AD. The Romans came up against Jerusalem. Come on. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Flee to the mountains. Now, what mountains was Christ making reference to? When he said flee to the mountains. Let's get the history. Matthew. You know what I want? 2.13. Yep. Matthew chapter 2 verse 13. Now, would it be Kilimanjaro or the Golden Heights? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna read it now. Okay, so but, we're gonna read it. The but, Golden Heights, the Golden Heights, <laughs> it borderlines Syria. Okay. Christ is gonna tell you out of his own mouth where he fled to, where he told the Jews to flee to. But a question for you: uh -huh. there, are there, there are those, there are those of our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. who are of a lighter hue, and, and, and you, you 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 refer to the white man as the devil. Yes, he is. That's what the Bible says. Okay. All right. No problem. I understand that, mm -hmm. but there are those who would not or have no mild intent or mild, mild intent towards you, but are they still evil, even if they're white? And they, 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 they well, are let's, called let's, by Christ, they are servants of Christ, they mm -hmm. believe in God, they, have done, they, they live their lives in, 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 in a way patterned after Christ, as we all try to do. No one here is perfect. We are Absolutely. all Lord beings. But to 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 okay. So question now mm -hmm. is the is is the Asian brother the devil? Is 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 the is the? I, mean, I just because again coming. Well, from let me. Let, fight, that's a beautiful question. See, that's a beautiful question from it. That's a neo neophytic question. Neophytic question. I'm going to okay. give you a neophytic <laughs> answer. Okay. All right, and the answer comes in a form as a question. You're going to answer your own question. So, let's deal with the white man first. First, let's get a scripture. Revelation 2, verse 9. See, because I wanted you to clarify, because mm -hmm. some would view that as hate speech. 
Of course they would view that as, as hate speech. I, I, mean, I understand that. I mean, but it's not hate speech, it's okay. love. Okay. It is love for our people because we want them to wake up right. or continue to suffer at the hands of uh, colonization. Give me Revelation 2 verse 9, then Malachi 1 and 4. Come on. This is the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So right here, brothers and sisters, Christ is speaking to the real Israelites, the real Jews. He says, I know your works. Your tribulation and poverty. We are the poor ones. Come on. But thou art rich. Why is he saying we're rich? Because all the glories, covenants, and promises of the Bible only belong to the Israelites. Come on. And I know the blasphemy mm -hmm. of them which say they are Jews and are not. Who's running around calling themselves Jews? Christ has said, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. But are what? But. Are the synagogue of Satan. Read that again. But are the what? The synagogue of Satan. Christ calls the white man that calls himself a Jew. The synagogue of Satan. Now go to Malachi 1 verse 4. The so-called white man's real identity in the Bible. Since they come from us. Like my brother said. The host said. Is Esau. E-S-A-U. When you go to Genesis 25 verse 25. Let's get that first. For the listeners, so you don't get confused. Everybody came from Adam. Adam was a black man. Now we're going to read about the first time another color was written. Genesis 25, 25. Come on. Genesis 25, verse 25. And the first came out red. The what? And the first came out red. This is the origin of the white man. It says the first came out red. Come on. All over like a hairy garment. So he came out red all over like a hairy garment. Come on. And they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. So the biblical name for all European nations on this planet is Esau. E-S-A-U. Now let's see what God has to say about Esau, whose name was later changed to Edom. E-D-O-M. Malachi 1 verse 4. This is the book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. So where was when was Edom impoverished, brothers? During the Middle Ages, also known as the Dark Ages. Come on. But we will return and build the desolate places. When did the so-called white man return and build the desolate places? The Renaissance period, which means rebirth. Rebirth of the so-called white man in the earth, meaning his power structure, his white supremacy, his ideologies. Come on. Thus said the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. They shall build, uh -huh. but I will throw down. Uh -huh. And they shall call them. Stop. The Bible says they shall call them. Them is plural. Them is making reference to all of Esau. Come on. The border of wickedness. The what? The border of wickedness. Read. And the people and the, the person and the people and the person and the people people is plural and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. You hear that, brother? The Bible says Christ God has indignation for Esau, which is the biblical name of the so-called white man, forever. He calls them the border of wickedness. So can I really say, okay, well, I know there's some good white people. Some of you I have good white people on your job. All right? They give you tips. They pay you wages. They might take care of you. They might say, hey, hey, Charlie, how are you doing? How's your day? But God calls them the border of wickedness. So am I going to trust in my own opinion or am I going to trust what God says? We got to trust in what God says. Okay? But I don't want to forget what you said before, Luke 21. Uh, Matthew 2.13, I want to show you how the Israelites ended deeper south into Africa. Because we were in northeast Africa. What happened that made us flee out of Jerusalem into, um, into the south parts of Africa and the west parts of Africa? Come on, Matthew 2.13. This is the book of Matthew chapter 2 verse 13. Mm -hmm. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, mm -hmm. saying... Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And flee into Egypt. Flee into Egypt. Meaning Egypt was not too far. Why did he say take Christ and flee into Egypt? Because we go hide amongst the other dark nations. This is a place where all of our fathers always seeked refuge. 
during the time of um, Joseph in Egypt, Moses in Egypt, during the time of Jeremiah with Babylon, we went to Egypt for protection. Egypt was right next door, brothers and sisters. So when you go back to Luke 21, Christ tells the Israelites, flee into the mountains. Where's the mountains? Egypt. Come on. And let not, this is the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. You hear that? Come on. And let not them that are in the countries enter there into. So Christ is saying, those that are outside of Jerusalem, don't come back to Jerusalem. Come on. Question for you. Here yes, sir. Go. Hold that point. Egypt. Yeah. I just saw a documentary and I like to read and, and mm -hmm. do my own research. But uh, Egypt, not a caliphate. G Egypt is, 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 of course, we all know, strictly Muslim. Yes. Islam. Yes. All right. Now, you, you are preaching Jesus Israel and the Bible. Yes, sir. And if you would go to Israel with this, with, with this right now, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. If well, I, I've so been there. Him. I've been there. Would they be so well? And you and you? can uh, you take on a public platform? You know, Wahhabism is an extreme form of Islam. Yes. And 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 and, and uh, you know. <laughs> well, let me tell you they, something. They just recently allowed their women to drive. I know. I know. I hear all of that. Let me tell you something about the Israelites, though. Mm -hmm. The Israelites, the men that you see here in purple and black, and even those that you see online that profess themselves to be Israelites. Um, I can't really speak for them. I could only speak for this congregation, IUIC. We don't fear no man. We go where other men have not gone before. We have went to Israel and stood in the marketplace and taught this word, and we brought hell fire on earth. And the white man was there. They wanted to shut us down. One guy had an uh, M16 or AK, whatever. He was in the military. What about Egypt? Though? They wanted to. We haven't gone to Egypt yet, but Egypt is coming. Wherever our people are scattered, wherever you have the remnants of the diaspora, you better believe IUIC will be there. We will be there. We fear no man. You put one of us to death, he's going to rise up. You put him to death, I'm going to rise up. You put me to death, he's going to take over. You put him to death, he's going to take over. We fear no man. Why? Because we walk in the spirit of Christ. Okay? So we're going to go everywhere and teach this Bible. Okay? There's too many of us. They can't put all of us to death. And we have faith in the Most High. Do you have a, mm -hmm. a, a, a offshoot or branch in Egypt right now? No. Um, no, but we do have followers. Okay. We don't have a school, a sanctuary, right. a school, or a church, as you call it, like a building. No. Are they allowed to follow you openly in Egypt? Uh, you have brothers. Yeah, you have brothers that um, they'll wear fringes. They won't, they won't be persecuted? No, 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 no. Okay. They'll wear fringes. They have their beard like right. the other Muslims. Right, right, right. Um, they profess themselves openly to be a Jew. Uh, the Arabs over there, they know who the real Jews are. You know, okay. you have uh, um, um, Gamar Abdul Nasser in one of his speeches. He said that um, you left the land, you left the land black, but you came back white. That's why we have a problem with you. You know, exactly. All right, but of course, unfortunately, he was assassinated. Mm. Here's here's the question for you. Yes, sir. Um, you know about the modern day slave trade, and um, there, 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 there are there are reports. Although I don't know why the media here in the West does not report on it as frequently as or with any consistency as they ought to. Mm -hmm. But there are our brothers and sisters coming out of Ethiopia due to the strained economic conditions, who have found who have found and are finding themselves victims of human trafficking and slavery. Yes. And that is happening in countries like Libya and Egypt. And Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia. So 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 my question is if they quote unquote love the black man so much or are instructed to whose instructions they are following I don't know. Mm -hmm. But why are they in this very time that we speak of 2018 December 13th there are black slaves in those countries, in that region. Okay, I'm going to answer that. They don't that. adhere to what you are speaking to. Yeah. They don't adhere to the Bible. They yeah. probably adhere to the Quran. Yes, absolutely. And so, now you're talking about the black people, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got so you. They are, and those who have them in slavery are themselves yes. descendants of y black people. Yes, I'm going to so gonna answer that. That's a for me. Oh, absolutely. That's a, that. that's a beautiful question. Yeah. I'm going to answer that. I'm going to answer that. Just let me, I'm going to finish this one point, then I'm going to get to that. Okay. Go ahead. Finish that in Luke. Luke 21, verse 22.
For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in so those Christ, days. So Christ said woe, meaning destruction unto those who are pregnant with child. Because um, the Romans besieged Jerusalem, and you had pregnant women that were either put to death or sold into slavery. Come on. And to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. So we fell by the edge of the sword, and we were led away captives into all nations. Come on. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So Christ told you that Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, meaning the other nations, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The time, we are still living in the time of the Gentiles. The time of the Gentiles has not been fulfilled yet because Christ has yet to make his second return. So by that, Christ is letting you know that the people in Jerusalem are Gentiles. So question, question. Yes. Was that Matthew 2 and 18 where it would speak to Rachel would be found, would, was weeping, would not be comforted? The Holy yes, that's it. That prophecy is in the book of Matthew. Around yes. the time when Herod was looking to, to kill yes. Jesus. Yes, he was killing the the, the um two ch the firstborn males and two exactly. years and under. under. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. And Herod was a so-called white man. He was an Idumean from the nation of Esau. Edom. Edom, yep. Now, get me, uh, get me Jeremiah. Get me Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 2, because you made... You had a point about the Arabs. What you're going to find out, brothers and sisters, is that we have a lot of people that are Israelites by blood, but they follow the Arabs' man religion. Prior to the transatlantic slave trade, you had the sub sahara slave trade. And our people still follow Islam today. Then you have those who are naturally Arabs, meaning they come from the seed of Ishmael. Okay, get me Jeremiah 3, verse 2. Jeremiah 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lying with. Mm -hmm. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with so thy whoredoms. So sat for them as the Arabians in the wilderness. We sat for them. We learned that thing. That Arab religion was forced on us, just like Christianity, and many of us now, we flock to Islam. I'm talking about the Israelites. That do that. We're not supposed to be under any religion, okay? God never gave us religion. He gave us laws, statutes, and commandments. Go to Psalms 83 real quick. Let me show you something about the children of Ishmael. Because the brother made mention. Our brothers and sisters, our Israelite black brothers and sisters, are being sold this very day on the slave market in Yemen, in Saudi Arabia, in Mauritania, in Libya, in um, Yemen. Okay, those are our people. And guess what? The world courts, they're not doing nothing about it. I don't see England doing nothing about it. I don't see America doing nothing about it. They can't do nothing. You know why? Because it would be hypocritical for them to do something about it when they themselves was guilty of the same thing. All right, give me Psalms 83 and verse 1. Psalms 83 verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Mm -hmm. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O God. Mm -hmm. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that and they that hate thee have lift up the head. So they that hate thee, God has lift up their head, meaning they become very prideful. Now King David is about to mention who has become very prideful. Who has lift up the head? The head. Who is the enemy? Come on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Who's the hidden ones? Us. Because it's hidden from us. That we're the Israelites. Our culture's hidden from us. Many of you foolishly in about a week or two, you're going to worship um, um, Christmas. You're going to celebrate Christmas when Christmas is of the devil. Hey, there's a big tree outside of this radio station right now. Many of you got the same tree in your house. Come on. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So it was more than just a white man that said, hey, let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. You know how we know that prophecy was fulfilled? Because over here in Bahamas, you're calling yourselves Bahamian. 
and you got all these different religions. In Haiti, they call themselves Haitians. They follow in what? Catholicism. Some do voodoo. Some do Catholicism. In America, we call ourselves black Americans. We're not calling ourselves Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. So that's how you know that the white man in the other nation has done, has done a beautiful, remarkable job on destroying our people. Come on. For they have consulted together with one consent. Uh -huh. They are confederate against thee. Mm -hmm. The tabernacles of Edom. Oh, uh, Edom. And it says the tabernacles of Edom. He's the first one on God's hit list. That's why he's mentioned first. The tabernacles of Edom, the white man. Come on. And the Ishmaelites. Oh, there we go. The Ishmaelites, the Arabs. Sub-Saharan slave trade and modern slave trade in Libya, Saudi Arabia. The Arabs had their hand in destroying the children of Israel. Come on. Of Moab. Oh, that's your Chinese people running around today. That is your Chinese people in these stores selling you dog and cat. And you buy it and you eat it wonderfully. You put that you put that sauce on it, now it's all good. You rather rather buy instead of buying from your brother and sister who has their own bohemian shop, you go to the Asian man. And what they do is they'll buy these stores and they'll sell you whatever products they have cheaper than your next door neighbor who looks just like you. And they put your brother and sister out of business because of you, because you're the consumer. You are the consumers that's making them rich. You are the consumers that's putting all their children through those Xing Sheng Fu universities that they got over there in China. You, you're the ones that's doing it. We have to come together as brothers and sisters, as the nation of Israel, and support one another. But first, you must realize who you are as a people. Okay, you must realize who you are as a people. Okay, go to the book of Deuteronomy. Let's show you. Let's show you the prophecy. What happened to our people, our black people? Deuteronomy 28, 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments. All his commandments, brothers and sisters. Not the ones you like. Don't, don't nitpick. Don't cherry pick. All the commandments. Come on. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So let's read some of these curses. Process of elimination. Who's the Israelite and who's not the Israelite? Come on. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. You hear that? Your sons and daughters, brothers and sisters in Bahamas, was given unto another people. When did this happen? Transatlantic slave trade. When did this happen? Sub-Saharan. Our sons and daughters was given unto another race of people. We didn't have any might. No economic might, no military might to retrieve our people. Okay, read. Thy fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. You hear that? That is colonization. Not only the white man, but you have the Arab man. They're taking all your resources and they're bringing it back to Hong Kong. Bringing it back to England. Bringing it back to Arabia. Meanwhile, you're left with nothing. Okay, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. Among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. You hear that? We're going to become a proverb and a byword amongst all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Meaning they're going to call us, call us out of our name. They don't come here to the island of Bahamas and call you Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin. They don't call you that. They don't call you Israel. They call you Bahamian. And they say, hey, you, 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 boy, go over there and get my daiquiri. Go get my coconut for me. That's what they do. That's how they treat you over here. Okay? Read verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Mm -hmm. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send you against hear what thee. They, you hear what God calls them, brothers and sisters? I didn't write this Bible. He says your enemies, not your friends, your enemies, your enemies, your enemies. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee Come on. in hunger uh -huh. and in thirst uh -huh. and in nakedness. You want food, water, or clothes, you have to go to your enemies to buy them. They own the stores, not you. They control the export and importing of minerals, of textiles, of water, not you. Come on. 
and in want of all things. Whatever you need, you got to go to them. Come on. And he. And what? And he. The same man that you got to go to in hunger, thirst, and nakedness. Shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who put yokes of iron on our necks? Who put yokes of iron on our necks, brother? Come on. Give me a direct answer. You got to answer that. If you're going to chime in with questions, I need an answer. Who put yokes of iron on our necks? Uh, establishing this premise yet, but I have a question for you. What do people, what do you say to people? will counter with the, with, the, with the counter and say, you are preaching from the oppressor's book, meaning that you are continuing or proliferating or promulgating what has been done to people of color for years. Okay. And they, they will call the Bible some, mm. some, some mm. schools of thought, some who are of the opinion, some who mm. are of the belief mm -hmm. and thought that the Bible is the book of the oppressor as it was used to forcibly and or otherwise uh, convert mm -hmm. and change the mindset of the Negro. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What, that is a that? that is a beautiful question and we heard that question a thousand times. Today makes it a thousand and one. The people who say that this is a white man's book, all right, I would kindly tell them to remove their cranium out of the white man's rear end. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. Because in the Bible, we read color. All throughout the Bible, it says black, black, black. Remember in slavery, we could not read or write. They taught us the Bible the way they wanted us to see the Bible. During the 1700s, there was a Bible just for Negroes. Every passage that talked about um, revolution and standing up, they removed it. They had three of those Bibles in the world. One of those Bibles was just turned in to the museum in Washington, D.C., next to the Library of Congress. Everything that incites revolution and standing up for your people and speaks against slavery, they removed it. I'll give you an example. Revelation 13, verse 10. Let's see what Christ said about slavery. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 10. Remember, keep in mind, we weren't able to read or write. When the Negro was caught reading, he was either whipped or killed or sold to another plantation. When the Negro knew how to read, what happened? He ended up being another Nat Turner. He ended up being another Tucson Louvatore. Come on. And he that leadeth into captivity. And he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity shall 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 go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword so why they did not read that in slavery because that will incite revolution why did how come the white man didn't open the bible and tell you king solomon was black or christ was black because that would would um instill self identity into you that self esteem that we lack the Bible is not a white man's book. The Bible is your book. It was written by the Israelites, for the Israelites, to the Israelites. Okay, question. How yes, sir. Is it that, how is it that, I'm trying to formulate this right now, but because um, uh, I was typing it out to, as a message because I wanted to formulate the question for you, so here it is. How is it that our oppressor, quote unquote oppressor, killed us for reading the Bible? Then the only book that we were allowed to read after we learned to read, after we were freed, quote unquote freed, was the Bible. Okay. And, that's so, and, 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 and then also too, you know, um, yeah, that, that question, that's one. I, I'll, I'll let you answer that one. Okay. That's a very, that's a very good question. Okay. What we're going to read, what we're going to uh, realize is that there were many books there were many books on the slave plantation. I'll make reference to a, a particular, a particular um, movie called The Birth of a Nation by Nate Parker, where he relieve, relived the life of Nat Turner. Nat Turner was groomed to read the Bible. He was not supposed to read it, but he was groomed to read it. And he, he read it so well that they used him to go from plantation to plantation to subdue the minds of his other brothers and sisters. Who was he groomed by? Uh, he, was groomed, he, was, he was groomed by the, by the white man on how to read okay. the Bible. Okay. He was groomed by, the, but the Spirit of God gave him discernment okay. on certain passages and what the devil, the white man, was trying to do. But he was groomed by the white man to read the Bible. 
But there were many slave movies and many slave scenes where if you were caught reading the Bible, you were killed. That is a misconception and a misnomer that the slaves were taught how to read the Bible after they were allowed to read. There was no, that reading and writing stuff didn't come until way after. And the reason the Most High God allowed the so-called white man to preserve this book for us so we can have it today so we can wake up to who we are according to the Bible. We got six minutes. It's all right. So we can wake up to who we are today. Remember, God is the mastermind behind all of this. The, script, the scripture says that God ruleth. God is the one that ruleth in the hearts of men. God is the one that allowed this man because you got to ask yourself, if this, if this book right here is our solution, if this is the solution to our problem and this condemns the white man, how come the white man ain't burn it like they did during the time of Maccabees? Here's the question for you. Mm -hmm. In this time where people are seeking to unite yeah. and do away with division and try to foster understanding, love, and and compassion, and mercy, or, or, or forgiveness, or what have you, mm -hmm. uh, it, would, it would appear mm -hmm. to me as a novice or a neophyte to the, to the doctrine or to the belief system or the statutes on which you are built or yes. established that I may not quite, if I want to follow you, I may not be able to be at peace with a white man. I may not be able to, 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 to. No, that's a, no, that's a big mis, that's a big okay, misconception. Question. Does the, does the, does the United, does the Israel United in Christ have white members? Do you have those who are of Edom or from Edom no. as a part of your, can they join? Absolutely not. And I'm going to show you why. Okay. I'm going to show you why. Matthew 15. Matthew 15, verse 24. Okay. So you will not be viewed then as a cult? As a what? A cult. You're not a cult. If a what? You're not a cult. No, no, hell no. We didn't have it. They might call us that, but no. Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. We have men. It's a revolving door. This, this, this truth is for the elect of the nation of Israel. It's not for everybody. A lot of people's going to reject it, and they're not going to want to keep the commandments in the faith of Christ, and they're going to end up dying when Christ come back. Matthew 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Christ out of his mouth said that he is not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, brothers and sisters. So that's why we go, like Ezekiel said, get ye to the children of the captivity. Who's the children of the captivity? Is all nations the children of the captivity? No. The children of Israel, which are the so-called Negroes, the so-called Hispanics of slave descent, and the so-called Native Indians. We are the nation of Israel. Okay. Have the Israelites read any other book except the Bible? Of course, we read many books. I myself have a plethora of books. I'm a I'm an avid reader, and um, I read all kinds of books. history. No, but I mean the book on which you base your belief system. As a the religion. book the book that we base our belief system is called the Bible. Okay. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, we have history books like this book right here by our beloved brother Rudolf R. Windsor. From Babylon to Ten Buck Two, we read books that coincide with the Bible. Okay, we read history books that coincide with the Bible. But our main book, Isaiah thirty-four sixteen, our main book is this book right here, and we'll show you why. Isaiah thirty-four verse sixteen. Isaiah chapter thirty-four verse sixteen. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. And read. The, the Bible says to seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. The book of the Lord is the Bible. Come on. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. You can't make the Bible anything. All the prophecies will not fail. Come on. For my mouth it had commanded, and his spirit it had gathered them. And the Most High's mouth and spirit on this earth is what's moving the resurrection of the Israelites in the words of this Bible. All right, brothers and sisters, you can follow us at... IsraelUnite.org IsraelUnite.org And we also have a school here located where? One block north, one building north of Bahamas Teachers and Credit Union. Captain Moxie Plaza. East Street. East Street. Okay, give them the number. 
Six seven seven nine nine one one. Okay. Six seven seven nine nine one one. Come learn who you are. Let's learn what we must do to prepare ourselves for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay. And with that, we say shalom.